And the title of this uh, chapter is uh, so the improper integrals of functions with alternate signs. <clears throat> now we just as a as an idea suggest you notice that here I put the absolute value in order to uh, obtain a non-negative function and uh, so uh, now this method of putting an absolute value is uh, uh, quite useful also for improper integral of functions in which the sign is not always the same. So let us uh, give immediately a definition. We have as usual a function defined on the half line a plus infinity. This function is integrable in the Riemann sense, the ordinary, in the ordinary Riemann sense. in AC for every C larger than A and <clears throat> if the improper integral of the of the absolute value for which the comparison criterion given before holds converges then So, one says that the integral from a to plus infinity of f absolutely converge. Okay? And... Uh, <clears throat> So the idea now is uh, to extract information from the absolute convergence to the convergence, okay? So when I say absolutely converge, I'm not saying that this guy converged absolutely, definitely, okay? It is a technical word. This absolutely converges means that the improper integral of the absolute value converges, okay? Don't get confused by the ordinary language here. And uh, so the theorem immediately gives us a criterion, another criterion, and we can call it the absolute convergence criterion. Stating that if the improper integral of f, of course with the same hypothesis here, if the improper integral of f absolutely converges, then it converges. So if I take if the same improper integral converge without the word absolutely. Proof, there are many possible proofs and this is one of uh, the smartest I found. This is in the book by Fabio Nicola again. And uh, start from the obvious inequality minus absolute value of f less than f less than plus absolute value of f then sum in sum in the absolute value of f to 
to the three terms. We get zero, not larger than f, plus the absolute value of x, not larger than two times the absolute value of f. Now, <clears throat> let now be c any number larger than a, and then we have that the integral from a to c of f can be then written as the integral of from a to c of f plus absolute value of f minus the integral of the absolute value of x. Okay, here we are using the elementary algebra of integrals and also the fact that if f is integrable between a and c, and c then the absolute value of f is. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> now, this is uh, so concerning the second integral, this term here, let me be here is non-negative, this is non-negative, okay, let me take the red, is a non-negative function, and the integral converges the proper integral converges by Converges to a plus infinity f plus absolute value of f in the x by comparison with uh, two absolute value of x. See the formula asterisk here. Okay, so this converges. On the other hand, <coughs> the guy here, the last term. It converges <clears throat> converges to again by the algebra minus a plus infinity integral of the absolute value of f of x because by hypothesis f absolutely converges, then the improper integral of f is given by the limit for c going to plus infinity of this integral <clears throat> is equal to these two limits which exist, so f plus absolute value of f minus integral between a and plus infinity absolute value of f and so this is this guy here which exists and is finite I repeat it is finite simply why <clears throat> simply because it is the difference of two real numbers, okay? So now as a first example of the application of this, let me just uh, consider the The last example we mentioned in the last lecture, so the integral between 1 and plus infinity of cosine of x divided by x to the power 3 halves. We know from previous example we know that uh, Z 
the same integral but with the absolute value here converges then by absolute value criterion sorry the absolute convergence criterion so the convergence of the absolute value we have that the integral from 1 to plus infinity of cosine of x divided by x over 3 halves converges. Notice that here I'm not talking about the actual value of this integral. This is out of reach. At least with our techniques, we cannot compute exactly the value of this integral. Okay? The question is much simpler, it's about the convergence, and it is much faster. So if you are asked just to decide, just to establish whether an improper integral converges, diverges, or is indeterminate, don't lose time trying to compute it exactly. Sometimes it is impossible, okay? But it is possible to establish the convergence. Another example that requires a small trick is the following. And uh, again, there is this integral between 1 and plus infinity of sine of x divided by x. <clears throat> okay, now the immediate inequality state that the absolute value of sine of x divided by x <clears throat> is uh, estimated from above by the fraction 1 over x by the inverse of x, but notice that here, since as we computed in the first example and also when discussing the prototypes we need, since the integral from 1 to plus infinity of 1 over x diverges, the comparison principle cannot be applied. So here, the warning is uh, about the application of uh, uh, the comparison principle in the correct way. I recall you, if the smaller has an improper integral that, com that diverges, then the larger has an improper integral that diverges. But if it is the larger that diverges, we cannot say anything about the smaller. It could converge. So we have to invent something smarter. <clears throat> and uh, in this case, the observation is that uh, if we integrate by parts and we integrate sine, the sine becomes a cosine. That it is uh, equal to the sine for what concerns the behavior at plus infinity. And... Uh, <clears throat> On the other hand, if we differentiate 1 over x, the behavior is better because it decays uh, faster. So let us see what happens. So the method is the integration by parts. So we have the integral between 1 and c sine of x divided by x is equal to, so as I told you, we first integrate sine of x, so we obtain minus cosine of x over x to be evaluated between 1 and c, then minus, sorry, plus integral between 1 and c of cosine of x, then we have to differentiate 1 
over x and here we obtain x squared with a minus here in front. Now by evaluating everything we have that here we have minus cosine of c over c plus cosine of 1 over 1 minus the integral between 1 and plus infinity of cosine x divided by x squared. Sorry, not plus infinity, it is c. Okay, now compute the limit. For c going to plus infinity, the first term goes to 0. The second term is constant and remain equal to cosine of 1. And here, noted that this converges y since it absolutely converges. <laughs> it is quite strange. It converges because it absolutely converges. So it is meaningless in the ordinary language, but in the mathematical language has a precise meaning. Okay. This converges since it absolutely converges. And why? Because here you have cosine of x divided by x squared. Absolutely, this is less than 1 over x squared. And you know that the integral converges. So by comparison, the integral cosine of x over x squared absolutely converges. Okay, this is the explanation of what I wrote before. So I put here an indeed and I end up by saying that the integral between 1 and plus infinity of sine of x divided by x is equal to cosine of 1 minus integral between 1 and plus infinity of cosine of x divided by x squared in the x. So <clears throat> here we use the, here we prove the, this fact. Fact is that uh, this integral converges, but we don't know whether it absolutely converges. So conclusion. <clears throat> this converges, but we don't know. whether it absolutely converges. Why? Because when we tried to attack it directly, we were led to something which is, which brings no answer basically. And uh, so, So we want to, to understand whether it converges absolutely or not. And uh, so you see this is a this is a not so not so easy. Why? Because uh, <clears throat> Sine of x divided by x starts from 1 and then it declines following the hyperbola 1 over x. So we know that uh, here the area is to be, to be computed as positive, here it is negative, <coughs> here it is positive, and so on and so on. The fact that the improper integral converges means that uh, 
the sum that oscillates here, it declines, then it rises, then it declines, and so on and so on. So the fact that uh, one to plus infinity sine of x of x converges means that, or implies that, the sum of the areas <clears throat> between the bumps and the x axis of course this is sine of x over x <clears throat> so converges whatever it means if one takes into account the signs namely the fact that here in the sum this area is positive and this is negative and so on and so on but when you have to evaluate absolute convergence what you have to evaluate is whether this other sum with all positive signs converges Mm -hmm. So, on the other hand, absolute convergence requires something stronger. Namely, the convergence of the areas below the bumps all with positive signs. Is it true or not? So let us see whether it's true. So let us analyze this problem. Okay, so if... So we want to compute this limit. <clears throat> We have to proceed quite slowly here. This is not easy. This is not easy and not short. We aim at compute this integral, or if you want, this limit. The limit for C going to plus infinity, integral between, sorry, not zero, it is one. You can also do by zero, why not? <clears throat> but one and plus infinity of, sorry, plus infinity, from 1 and C of sine of x over x in the x, okay, with absolute value. <clears throat> we know that this limit, this limit by monotonicity, since the integrand is positive, such a limit is, exists. But it can be finite in the case of convergence or infinite in the case of divergence. We have to decide whether it is finite or infinite. Hmm? In any case, it is equal to the the limit for n going to plus infinity from 1 to pi n. What is pi n? Here you have pi, here 2 pi, here 3 pi, and so on and so on. Which means that I'm computing this area not at an arbitrary c, but bump by bump limit. 
one, two, pi n, in red it is good, of sine of x over x in absolute value. Okay? <clears throat> Okay, this is good. And uh, because it is a subsequence, so if you take yn, so or cn equal to pi n, goes to plus infinity and apply the limit through sequences theorem. Okay? So uh, now let us. Uh, Try to understand what, what happens here. First, the integral between 1 and pi n of sine of x divided by x can be written as the integral over from 1 to pi of sine of x over x because we start from 1 and 1 is here. One is more or less here. So. <clears throat> Plus, and here we have uh, the integral between pi and n pi of sine of x over x dx. So this is finite, the first is finite. So we focus on the second integral in the second thing. We focus on this integral here. Which means we basically start from pi and go forward. Notice that here the fact that we start from pi does not change anything because uh, uh, here the first contribution is finite. So uh, the fact that the sum is finite or infinite does not change whether we start from here or from 1 or from 0 or from 2 pi or so on and so on. Okay? What is uh, important is just the behavior at infinity and this behavior is not touched by our choice. So we focus on this integral here and then we write the integral between pi and then pi of sine of x divided by x is equal to the sum for j going from 1 to n minus 1 of uh, <clears throat> so uh, j pi, j plus 1 pi of sine of x over x dx. Notice that here, what I did is just, was just uh, um, to describe the sum of these areas as really the sum of the first plus the second, plus the third. I just separate all the contribution of every bump. So this is the contribution to the area of the J's bump. Now, of course, for every X, in the interval of integration j pi, j plus 1 pi, we have that x is less than j plus 1 pi. So the inverse of x is larger than 1 over j plus 1 pi. Then we move from here, but we obtain that uh, the integral of sine of x over x is larger than the integral for sum of the integrals and here I write instead of x instead of 1 over x here I write 1 
divided by pi times j plus 1 integral of the absolute value of sine of x. So let me rewrite it. Here we have 1 over pi outside the sum. 1 over j plus 1. And here j pi. j plus 1 pi. Sine of x in absolute value. The x. And now we have to decide what to do with this integral. And notice that here the integral is just of sine of x, and it is the integral of uh, the function when it describes a bump. So this is sine of x. So I'm... So, notwithstanding the picture, the area below the bumps is always the same. because of the symmetry of the sign and the periodicity. Because sine of x in absolute value is periodic with period pi not to pi. Then, this implies that this integral is equal to a, an integral in every interval of uh, size pi. So, for instance, this here, where we can uh, also forget about the absolute value because... Uh, the sign is positive between 0 and pi, and so we integrate it by minus cos of x between 0 <coughs> and pi, and so we have minus minus 1, and again minus minus 1, so we have 2. Then Going back to the previous inequality here, we have that uh, the integral between pi and n pi of absolute value of sine of x divided by x is larger or equal than 2 over pi sum j from 1 to m minus 1, 1 over j plus 1. Okay, we can make, make it a bit simpler and say this is 2 over pi, sum between 2 and n of 1 over j. Okay, so we have now to, to, to decide whether the limit for n going to plus infinity of this sum diverge or converge. Let us try to understand, so the limit for n going to plus infinity converges or diverges. Let us uh, uh, try to understand uh, pictorially what we are trying to compute, because it is always extremely useful. Hmm? So here you have the function 1 over x, and we have 1, so we have 2, so we have 2, we have 1, but we have 3, we have 4, and so on and so on. So, the first uh, the first thing we want to compute is sorry, horrible we 
then never buy an iPad. iPad is, iPad is horrible. Sometimes it records you without uh, the voice and so on. It's a really horrible thing. So, <clears throat> this is uh, so the first this is 1 over x. So, this is 1 over 2. This is 1 third. This is 1 fourth. And so, <clears throat> now we are summing the sum which we wrote here. is the sum of the black of the areas of the black rectangles okay <clears throat> now this sum is below 1 over x but try to Consider this other hyperbola. This red hyperbola is 1 over x plus 1. Okay, it is 1 over x plus 1 because in 2 it is 1 third, in 3 it is 1 fourth, and so on and so on. Okay, from the picture it is clear that, not only from the picture, but since <clears throat> 1 over j is larger than 1 over x plus 1, for every x in j minus 1 j, then we have that uh, again the integral between uh, <coughs> pi and n pi of sine of x over x the x I recall you that this was sorry larger than not smaller than 2 over pi sum for j going from 2 to n of 1 over j. So this is larger than 2 over pi and then sum for j going from 2 to n of the integral between j minus 1 and j of the x over 1 plus x. And uh, why the integral? Because here I'm saying that the black area is larger than the area below the red hyperbola. Okay? But uh, this is equal to what? To 2 over pi. And uh, this is the sum. This guy here is the sum of all the areas below this hyperbola. So resist just a minute because we are at the end of this long, not so easy argument. But if you repeat it step by step, you will get it easily. And uh, here we go from 1 up to n dx divided 1 plus x and this is equal to 2 over pi log 1 plus x we don't need the absolute value because we are in the positive half line between 1 and n and this is 2 over pi log m plus 1 minus log 2 by the property of logarithm we say divided by 2 and this goes to plus infinity as n goes to plus infinity. 
So on the other hand, by this inequality, so in other words, by this inequality, this is larger than this guy here, and this guy here diverges by comparison, by single comparison, we have that the limit for n going to plus infinity of <clears throat> 1, not only pi, 1 n, n pi of sine of x divided by x dx is larger than the integral between 1 and pi sine of x divided by x plus and 2 over pi, the limit for n going to plus infinity of log n plus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to plus infinity. So, the limit for c going to plus infinity, 1 and c, sine of x over x dx is equal to plus infinity. Then, the very important conclusion is the following. The integral between 1 and plus infinity of sine of x over x converges but absolutely diverges so the conclusion is the following we prove that theorem that says that absolute convergence implies convergence But it is not true in the reverse direction. And this means that uh, the absolute convergence is a stronger notion than convergence. And uh, we really do not, uh, do not end here because we learned another important thing. We learned that... Uh, by our argument, by the comparison with a hyperbola, we learn that the limit for n going to plus infinity of the sum j from 1 to n, 1 over j, is equal to plus infinity. And this is, from the cultural point of view, this is very important. It took centuries to the mankind in order to understand this fact. This is called the harmonic series. This is called the harmonic series. And the harmonic series diverge very slowly, but it diverges. Okay? So recall it when we will study series at analysis 2. And so let us go for the next video.